Hi everyone, uh, this is Chris from Meander, just here with a very quick video to show you uh, how to answer some of the questions that we commonly hear from heads of TA or new recruiting managers, uh, such as how should I determine recruiter capacity? How many vacancies should I expect a recruiter to handle? Uh, how many positions should we be expecting each recruiter to fill each month? And how many hires really should we expect a recruiter to make? Uh, and really the idea here is to help you uh, figure out how how you, you are uh, progressing towards uh, filling a whole um, series of, of open recs, uh, given that most people right now are working through a new headcount challenge. And so um, I built a very simple model. Um, I've used this model in the past to really give a quick sanity check to see if we have the right rec load across the team, if we have um, the right uh, kind of activity level throughout the funnel, uh, and whether we're actually expecting to hit goals um, or come close um, in a given quarter or, or a given year. Um, so this is a, a pretty basic um, overview. You can see all the gray fields are editable. Um, they're data inputs that you can use. You can pull data from uh, Greenhouse, from Lever, or you can just make assumptions, which is what I did here, really from some of the examples that I, I can recall from memory. Um, so you have the funnel activity required for each hire. So this is just a reverse funnel. You'll be familiar with that. In here, we have an assumed activity required uh, for each of those stages. So this example, uh, we're, we're assuming that a recruiter will spend one minute reviewing each prospect uh, before figuring out who they want to reach out to. And uh, an outreach takes 10 minutes. Uh, recruiter screen takes 45 minutes when you think about the phone call and then the follow-up and then the uh, kind of greenhouse admin. Um, the hiring manager screen takes about 50 minutes of recruiter time. We're not accounting for hiring manager time in this. Uh, and then total interview time, really the recruiter is heavily involved with debriefs and um, uh, and everything else that comes with that. Um, so what you can see is that for these three uh, different pipelines that we are envisioning for this, this early stage company, maybe you have an entry level, this could be kind of uh, early career campus hiring, it could be programmatic sales hiring, it could be warehouse hiring, um, where you get a steady inbound, and all you really need to do is review candidates, screen them uh, and get them through the door. Um, the business hiring is a little more um, kind of outreach where uh, you're, you're engaging passive candidates. And so you can see that for um, 100 prospects that you reach out to, maybe you'll actually get on the phone with 20 of them. And with technical hiring, we know it's a little more complicated. So it'll take uh, kind of twice as many um, in mails or, or emails to get the same number of people on the, on the phone to actually uh, generate those hires at the end. And so here we have the total amount of recruiter hours uh, that is taken to uh, actually generate each hire um, in a given month. And that's really just a calculation of total activity times by time that, that the activity takes. Um, we have an input here for utilization. So if recruiters are spending most of the time recruiting, you're probably at like 80% utilization. Um, in some cases, you actually need to drop that down because of uh, different criteria, different work that recruiters need to do. And so what you do is you get the active number of hours per month uh, for each recruiter. And this gives you your hires per recruiter per month. That answers one of the questions. As you can see here, uh, it varies. Uh, entry level is obviously hiring more, more per month because there's fewer activities involved. Technical hiring is, is less efficient because uh, kind of it's more passive. And so that's kind of one of the, the kind of key metrics you might use. Uh, and then coming down to step two, once you've got your hires per month, you can then start to think about how you how you assign those requisitions across the team. So in this example, we have four recruiters supporting the three different uh, pipelines. Um, so what we've done is we've allocated um, all entry-level hiring to one of the recruiters. Uh, we split business hiring across two. Maybe Amy focuses 100% on business. Brian is split 50-50 between business and technical hiring. Uh, and then Chloe is just purely focused on, on technical hiring. And so what you can see here is um, for a given kind of new rec load of 25, uh, split across um, all these uh, different recruiters. Um, we are kind of getting different hires per month uh, per recruiter, and this is a good way to set goals to complete the total 25 hires. And we can see if we look at the amount of out recruiting hours available by month, uh, we can see that actually by, if we start in March, by May, um, we're going to have a little capacity with Brian. And so when we think about new recs being added, we can think about like, where those... Um, those recs are assigned to. And you can actually edit this so you can experiment with um, maybe giving all uh, technical roles to one person to Chloe and then splitting the um, business roles evenly across Amy and Brian. Uh, so now you can actually see Amy and Brian are going to run out of work to do um, in May, but the technical roles are going to take longer to fill as Chloe won't really uh, have that extra capacity until July.